Good evening everyone. Today's video is about remote extensions. Being able to select your extensions and have people outside of your network to connect to your PBX. One of the big issues with remote extensions is to make sure that you have to secure yourself for any issues regarding having giving outside access. One of the fastest ways of doing this is setting this up inside of the extensions and allow ACL information be sure to uh, update your fail to ban configurations. Uh, be sure to keep tabs of which IP addresses that are being used inside of the PBX so you can protect yourself from any type of imminent threat if possible. So one of the first things you might want to check out is under the extensions file here. You go to any extension that you want them to have outside access. If we're going to adjust something called ACL, access list, inside of the extension, so you don't have to set up the access list for your entire asterisk server, that could be a bit of a pain. So I'm assuming it's better if you set up inside of the extension itself. It is definitely a permit deny rule. Uh, for an example, let's say you want to only allow one person's IP address inside of the account where and nobody else can access it outside of your network but just that one IP address you would set the deny as such leave it there and f here you will set the person's IP address Let, let's say their IP address is 12.1.1.1 let's set the wildcard mask now what this does it just allows only that one person with that IP address can access or register with that extension only but you're gonna have to know what their IP address is and as good a good measure you might want to know what their MAC address is as well so you can keep up with that inside the asterisk server so if they have any issues you know how to find it you know how to you know check it out and uh, fix it if anything happens or any person can't register after you said that just submit changes at the bottom apply configurations here okay so that really protected yourself from anybody else besides that one IP address to register with this extension since we have two extensions I can set this up on another extension here and I can show you an example let's say this person's IP address is 13.2.2.2 and these are the the public IP addresses not the internal only the public IP address of where the remote extension is trying to register to or register from I'm gonna add set the wildcard mask submit changes and apply configurations now as a scenario let's say you have many different extensions many different people inside of your office you have a few extensions on the outside a few extensions from a different country everybody is sending their information directly to your box for people that are inside of your network you should be fine but you can still set the ACL if you want uh, but it's really meant for people who you're trying to block out or people that's not allowing that should not get access to any other extension or module inside of your PBX only with the extensions that's it so in this case, if they have an issue with that extension or somebody tried to break in your box and use different extensions, different passwords for the extensions that you have here, it won't work. It will not work at all. It only will allow those extensions that you put in there. Now, the next thing you might want to look at, look into is to change your fail to ban settings. Uh, this, is, this is very important because now whenever they register, let's say uh, the person is doing spoofing with the registered IP address that you have for them. And they're being hacked from their end. What fail to ban does is a is intrusion detection. I guess you might have noticed that on the other videos. But what we'd be doing is we would be modifying the uh, fail to ban to allow a certain amount of registrations uh, within a few seconds or within with whatever rate that you set here. Anything else or any other suspicious activity on these extensions will, of course, be banned, and it will also send you an email. Now for this demonstration you're definitely going to have definitely going to need access to the command line it's already set up so you can use your 
you use any type of favorite SSH client. I'm using the 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 generic terminal on my MacBook here. But you can use Putty. Uh, you can go directly into the box if you have a monitor. Any any type of SSH or in this case also Telnet client, you can actually log in to, log into and use. So you're gonna log into this server here. Okay, let's make the screen a little bit bigger so everybody can see. All right, so fail to ban. Very, very, very good software. Very, very good to uh, to implement in, inside of any type of server. So I would definitely recommend fail to ban at, at all costs. Even with even with having a firewall, fail to ban is a very cheap and reliable way of doing any type of intrusion detection. I would definitely recommend that. Let's go into the config here, and for me, I'm using. Oh, wow, that's loud. I'm using Nano. You can also use Vi, Emacs, whatever your favorite text editor. If you're aware of that, I'm a standard. I believe that Nano is automatically installed inside of the box. Okay. Now, of course, you might have to. If you don't have root access, you might have to put sudo in front of that, s u d o in front of that command. But if you set up the box from our video, you should automatically have root access. All right. Now, this is the rules that you'd be modifying for fail to ban. There are a few automatic rules that are set inside here, but. I think they're fine. You don't have to modify them unless you're doing something, a uh, very uh, something customizable for as the firewall itself. But other, other than that, uh, it should be fine with just using the fail to ban jail .com file. First rule of thumb here is make sure you do not ban yourself. Oh, that's very very important because if you ban yourself, especially if you're using a remote connection to make changes to your box, uh, if you ban yourself, you Pretty much cannot get in at all unless the bail time is is a uh, uh, set up. If it's not set up and you set the bail the band time, excuse me, the band time a little longer than eighteen hundred seconds, like for an example, uh, set for a year, you can't get back in the box unless a year is up. So I would definitely recommend you un make sure you are not banned out of the server itself, or set up another back door, another uh, Ethernet port on the device so you can log in from a different server there's many ways you can actually do that but I recommend just not blocking yourself out of the own server so for an example we're gonna allow everything from my network to the 1 slash 24 and you can also set the other extensions the ones that have their own remote extension access but we're going to keep those out of here because they are they should be registered fine and we are the those are the IP addresses that we try to monitor. So I will leave those out of here. Just make sure that you cannot block yourself and also your provider. For an example, we do have the two way dot IP dot net and IP address of that would be So just to make sure that the box the the server is not sending too many registrations or anything suspicious that failed to ban might pick up it will take it, it will ignore the, your provider and also your internal network so you can at least access it and troubleshoot band time i will leave that there but you can make it a lot stricter this is 1800 seconds you can change it to 3200 or like i made it to like 700 600 very long so that once the person is banned from my from my server they cannot just wait for a few minutes to to go back in, but I, I wouldn't recommend doing going this far. But if you feel that the person is constantly threatening you, uh, I will probably make this ban time a little longer, so that they can't just come back in within a matter of minutes. 
But for this build, we we're just gonna save thirty six hundred. Just keep my four for a little while. I would not recommend changing the buying time, but yeah, leave that there. Max retries. How many times that they're being validated? So they're sending a uh, let's say username uh, mix match three times. After the third time, within the six hundred seconds here, it will ban them. Uh, very good. Uh, I think three is five, four enough because I, I, I'm assuming that the person who's trying to register, they can't register at the third time. They're probably not the person that should be registering. So I will leave that intact. But these are the, the preset rules that, that they already implemented. SSH IP tables rule, I will definitely leave that in there. One of the, the biggest issues with breaking into a box is that they're always trying to break in with SSH. So I will definitely leave that there. I will not disable that at all unless your box or your server is under a very good firewall that's only going to be allowing certain IP addresses at all times. In this case, you can disable that or just leave that there. It's still a good backup method because if the person who are authorized to log into your device, it might be somebody else that's fishing from your, from your authorized IP address. So we don't know exactly who are trying to break into your box. I will still leave this on because it, it gives a secondary authentication, secondary uh, security, also inside of your server. If here, each one of these set specially, send mail, who is, I do is that once you, once a person is being blocked or you restart this fail to ban, it shows on the email the title or the header that you want to be shown. For this case, when they try to break into your box and if it sends the email to you, it will send it as SSH. It, it will show that's coming from root at localhost sender fail to ban at pvx.dns or you can change it, change that to your personal email address oh, we can do that here for an example so if that person tries to break into the server with the SSH rule, it will send me an email to alerts ipcoms.net. It will test me. Hey, it will tell me, hey, this person is being blocked into your system. It will also give you some information on who the person is and quite possibly where they come from. So you can copy that, print that off, save that, and you can use it for reference to your network manager to block them totally, or just keep it for your records. And go through this file because you, you're going to see many of these. I like the Pro FTP, which is good for FTP servers. Uh, this is good for uh, authentication. So there, there are many of these. Even Apache, when somebody trying to break into your actual web interface, if you have access outside the world, after so many retries of the password, it also will block the person as well. Some of these you might not be using unless you're doing something uh, very, very production-like and with your server. But the most important one that Jump. Let's jump a little bit. Now, the main event, asterisk hyphen IP tables. Very important. They actually modify this every year. So any type of new exploit, they actually modify the file. It keeps it up to date. So you be sure to look at your RSS feeds on the main PBX in a flash interface when you log into your IP address on the left hand side. They have many different updates for IP tables and type of exploit that needs to be sent out to the masses. They will have it there. Now, this module here is set to look into the asterisk.full file, which is good. Also, you can also do the lot of messages. It depends on where you want the files to be looking from. Max retries. If anybody try to send a password five times automatically, it will ban them for 1800 or somebody trying to register with the bad authentication different username different password wrong kodak anything that sends an alert to asterisk five times it will block them and also will see an email under asterisk to the email address so be sure to modify this to your personal email address to make sure that you get all of them very important because if not you won't know who's being blocked and let's say you might have a few false positives you won't be able to know who's being blocked if it doesn't tell you the email you have to constantly check the server over and over again just to find them 
And of course, after a while, that gets a little tiresome. So you can modify it to see an email or if you have certain cell phones, you also send them to text as well. So be sure to, uh, to look at after that. Now, after you made the modifications to this server, you can save it. You can do a control X. Or actually control O to save. Then control X to exit. You can do a service. Actually, service failed to ban. Restart. Okay, that's it. So now, two things has happened. You are now set your box up for remote extensions. Um, per extension, also you set the box up to do any type of intrusion detection, just in case. Would we'll give you a second layer of security for allowing remote or when well private public IP addresses to register up to your server. With those two set, you're actually pretty secure. But you have to remember to keep tabs of the extensions, especially the ones that are remotely set up. Keep tabs of those. Have a notepad. Write those down. And if they change your IP address, uh, they have to let you know. There's many ways to keep tabs with it just to make sure that you're not getting type of false positives when it comes to your firewall or your intrusion detection device here. Okay, that guys, that is actually the entire video for this week here. I just wanted to touch bases on you guys of setting up remote extensions because I do know some guys might, some people might actually have people who are trying to register to their software from different locations. Of course, if you have any questions with this video, be sure to like and subscribe our videos. Send us a few comments, send us a few emails and videos, and I will see you guys next week.